Okay, hello, we are live right now with the Trevelyan Stall Competition. Here with Andy and with Bob. Bernardo Bright, he just made his first landing. 60 meters of takeoff in takeoff and we are waiting for the landing distance. What do you think about this, Bob? Tell us. Well, we got really good here. Oh. We got, oh, I got my mic here. It's here. <laughs> We've got really good air this morning. It's really calm and it's quite cool. And uh, the air is 100% stable. And so, and, and the lighting is good. So it should be a good morning. Okay, we're in one city. So he's taking the long route round, uh, Bernardo. He's, he's <laughs> Bernardo is on his second landing try. He's on final right now. Let's see how he do it. That shot is very calm. Yes, well, it's like they said yesterday. The approach is so easy to get a good shot here because it's such a pretty place. Real stables. Slow down. And then mm. 24. Yeah. And a half. <laughs> This is exciting. This is pretty cool. Yeah. You're doing the real, you're doing the real, got the real deal going here. Hi, good morning. Hey, hey, good morning. Good. Here, our friend Tinti, enjoy the play. So, Tinti, what do you think about what are we doing here right now? Hello, good morning, everybody. Here we are in Patagonia Bush Pilot, enjoying this fantastic event of a stall competition in a wonderful place, a wonderful day. So I am very happy here. Thank you. Okay, so Bernardo. Okay. You can say. So Bernardo. total 183 meters. So that's takeoff and landing. There we go. That's pretty impressive. I mean, that, that plane's been yeah. a, a labor of love for Bernardo. Whenever I've come here, he's been working on it. Yeah. In fact, I think he said you're a Valentine's card. He's been, <laughs> he really loves that plane. How long has he had that plane? Or how long has he uh, built, since he built it? I believe four or three months, no, not more than that. Oh, he's yeah, got it. It's quite a new plane to the hangar. It's uh, This is last year champion of the category. It's Hector. Hector. I don't okay, hear it. What do, what do you hear about that? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tinti is leaving the floor <laughs> right now. That was Hector's first takeoff. You got out really well. Seba, recordá pedir el apagado de transponder en cada puesta en marcha. Sí, sí. Mucho red. <risa> Mira, el, el Warrior parece que tuviera una luz abajo como el tuyo. Vaya, en los santos. Sí. <risa> It's, it's like a completely different day from yesterday. <clears throat> With the, the, the wind yesterday was, was on and off. It was uh, much more challenging, I, I think, yesterday. Dusty and... Yeah, yesterday we had, what, 10 to 20 knot gusts directly across the runway. All, across. All, 90 all, degrees. 
90 degrees across yeah. and it started somewhere in the middle of the night i remember the windows yeah. in my house started the air started to blow in and i could hear everything uh, but that's, that's just typical construction here. Is <laughs> no, no, it's not no. that. He's on a very strong construction it, yeah. here. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's just a, it's, it's an interesting thing that in uh, Argentina and in the Andes that the wind can change any time. And to me, it was interesting. It came up in the middle of the night. Yeah. Normally, the atmosphere is calm and has exactly. less yeah. energy. But it blew in in the night, and then it stayed right through dawn and through the morning yeah. till what noon or something at yeah, least till yeah. noon this is patagonia and this is this is why you come place and i guess this is why you come here to to train and and to to get exactly. that experience it's great for training it's great 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 for training and weather is one of the most important thing you have to He's on approach. study as a pilot and hector is on his on, approach Hector's on final When you're nice to stay. Oh, Bernardo is gonna win this. A hundred and thirty two or thirty three, I believe. Let's see what the judge says, but I believe it's something like a hundred and thirty two or thirty three meters. So first take off seventy meters, a landing. You think 133, 132? Let's see what the judge says. That you can see right now the Bristol from Hector Pilot. He won last year. Oh, you're way off. 202 meters. 132. So by the moment, Bernardo is on the top of. Oh, that's total. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Reading the wrong numbers there. So 202 meters. 132 meters landing. We were talking just as we came in about uh, tire sizes and the effect on braking. So Bernardo's got tiny little wheels, tiny little tires. So I'm guessing his his uh, brakes are working a bit more efficiently. Would that be right? Or am I just talking through my ass? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to work on the logic because big tires are heavy. It's, well, it's more complicated than that. It's more complicated he's, than that. He's got. Uh, Hector's got Behringer's on there, and they're pretty. They've got a pretty good brake. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. A very high pressure brake fluid. And okay. A, a really well developed. Right. Caliper. So here's the second takeoff. Nice takeoff from Hector. That gets out really well. That yeah. airplane. This plane has a huge flaps. Have you seen mm. those flaps? Yeah. They're huge. Oh, wow. And about the tires, Bernardo's planes came with the smallest tire. Yeah, I remember the, the teeny tires. The caliper that he has hasn't this, this strong enough to break the side of the wheel that he has right now. Mm -hmm. So, so Bernardo's a... plane is a plane that don't break ah, okay. Okay. so much efficiently. Yeah. So what's his plan? Uh, larger di diameter calipers or change I the pad he's material? I believe trying to put another caliper, yeah. two, two per wheel. Do you, do you look at much uh, material between pads and, and uh, brake pads and, and different... Uh, Composition of the brake yeah. pads? Yeah, we tried it a few times. On experimental planes, it's easy to try the new things. Yeah. You can see Rodrigo right now. Rodrigo is the parking guy of the stall event is helping us from a week and he is making a great job does he do deliveries because <laughs> my biggest hot legs i wouldn't mind some ice cream you need something <laughs> yeah. an ice cream some ice cream from the village <laughs> <laughs> So I've got a question in pretty much in two areas. Well, plane modification, there's loads of things I'd, I'm interested in about how you, what modifications you're allowed to do to the plane um, and within within safety limits, I'm guessing, because you know, you're up in the air and <laughs> if something goes wrong, there's no escape. Uh, but pilot, pilot skills, I mean, that's just practice or is, is there, you know, if you're a big fella, a little fella. You mentioned modifications to the plane. Yeah. So 
the best modification you can do to the airplane, the best thing you can spend money on in the yeah. airplane is fuel in the tank. Yeah. <laughs> and that, is, that me, yeah. basically means practice for the pilot. Yeah. So I'm guessing that everybody here has spent quite a bit of time just just slowly practicing and working it yeah. at landing on the line. And yeah, yeah. He's, and he's now, doing it. Yep. And now we're on, on final. Hector is on final right now. Yep. <clears throat> With that okay, 1.3 a... miles crosswind. Oof. Good luck. Perfect. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> I believe 30, 40, 60, 70, 80. About 180 meters from Hector. Hector at this moment is losing his... <laughs> <laughs> He's placed from the last year. Bernardo yeah. still on the top of the list. So Let's see what the judge says. So why was that? Why was that longer? Because he bounced. Because he lost the actual friction between the ground and the that, that short well, distance. He there. Might have realized he was hot. Yeah. Or a little fast. And then when he, then when he tried to get down, he had so much energy that when he touched, he yeah. bounced. Or... Okay. Here goes number three. Roberto. Roberto Bravo. Whoa, Roberto was about <coughs> a little more than a hundred and forty, hundred and fifty. The judges are working through hundred and fifty-two, I believe, from here. 52, 51, 50. Oh. <laughs> we can see here the judges, Gustavo and Darío. And they say, you can see the turn right now. What do you think? Well, you can see there that the nose wheel plane is easier to break. <laughs> full stop, full stop, full stop, full stop. And stop. Okay, so that, that will be disqualified. Yeah. 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 I believe it's disqualified not or not break. Completely stop. Let's see what the judge says. <laughs> the 
in the police. Here. Este. Vitus. Avísame si se escucha. Is in this one now? Okay, Robert is jump number two. Yeah. It's the first to turn off the engine on the rollout. That's, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I watched that. Yeah. So here he goes. Jump number two. So it's interesting that these planes uh, are so slippery in appearance and you know they, they get very efficient, right? So they get the speed and it actually helps the climb rate. So they try to get the, in this design, to get the best of both worlds. They get, they get uh, an, an efficient airplane, an efficient bird in the sky, but at the same time, uh, then they are working to get out and get back in as quickly as they can. Yeah. As well. It may true. not look like your average bush plane, but it's uh, it's effective. It's kind of a new aviation. <coughs> Rotac engines. You can see from here that the distance between the elevator and the ground of the Bristol, the blue and gray mm -hmm. Bristol, I believe it's not more than 30 centimeters. Mm. 10 inch. Mm, about I 10 see. inch yeah the, the bushes that might be you know? <laughs> not the best <laughs> for sure there's another plane to the ground well <coughs> excuse me we were talking about ground clearance just so when you're taxiing through Taxing through the rush somewhere where you don't have a runway like this, oh, okay. you. I believe in your first attempt to land in the backcountry area with a plane with the elevator so close to the to the ground, you're gonna hurt the plane for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah see, the, <laughs> see how high the tail is on PK's plane over there, relative. Andy. Effective from this one. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. feel like a, boy, a rock star. Right? <laughs> okay. There okay. he is on short final. Short final for his second attempt. Even at the line. Let's do. Oh, smooth line then. Smooth touch. Cut his engine and he slid his wheels. He was all in. He's got his brakes locked. He slid her to a stop. What do you think? And he stopped his engine on purpose or something is going on with that hard braking? What do you think, Bob? He's oh, turning I, off. Oh, I think he turned it off. That thing is that has a very balanced carburetor and stuff in it. Alright. I don't think unless he's got the idle turned down so far that Perhaps too. So next is gonna be Carlos with the yellow and gray Bristol. Carlos Modusco. He was practicing yesterday late and that plane 
can take off really short. There he goes. Tail up. One, two, three. Whoa. Less than 70 meters, I believe. Very slippery and he got a lot of lift. He's yeah. that's really performing. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I believe something strange is happening on that plane. in the Formula Student competition. I don't know if you're aware of what that is. It's where the students design and build a little race car. And uh, oh, the Formula. The Formula Student. And it was great. I mean, they, they had like, three different areas. One of them was endurance. And the university, we you know, we were we were pretty uh, underfunded. We had something like $6,000, $7,000 to build the whole car. The uh, the Graz team, the, the Austrian team, they had $100,000 to develop their engine. <laughs> you know, we were... But our guys just practiced. The thing we had was a test track, close. And I used to get up in the morning, drive them to the track, and they'd put all day in. And we beat them on the endurance just because the stuff that broke, they could fix. And they just, it was a heavier car, but so reliable. And I think with that year, we finished 10th in the world. You know, this little tiny, tiny college from Wales. Oh. Yeah, and so practice, practice, practice is, <laughs> is the message. Here. Practice is, I believe, the clue for everything in life. Everything that you put a lot of hours in, you're gonna become better that, every that, moment. That thing, whatever that is, that is whatever that exactly. is. Exactly. If you want to play the guitar, you need to put many, many hours playing the guitar. If you want to fly, it's the exactly same thing. Time. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> After flying, up, of course, never <laughs> during. <laughs> A long, very established final way out there. The air looks amazing. <laughs> you can see it on the birds flying there. The glide that that plane is making right now. We have an awesome air today. A little bit smoky, yeah. mind, from the fire yesterday. Yes. There is a huge fire near here, I believe 40 kilometers through the north. And you can see in the, image, in the, in the pictures, the smoke. It's making us long final, it's more than long final. to the line. Oh. Yeah, is that our shortest so far? Yeah. Uh, floated over the line a bit, but when he touched, he was slow. And he's that plane can, stopped, fly, right? can fly slow, really. Yeah. yeah. And the ground wow. effect on that wing is awesome because it's super near to and, the ground. And you mentioned being having the wing low, and does yeah. that have a pertinent? It, what Kike just said is is accurate. That the wing that low and the flap that near the ground, you get a compressed, you get a you get a lot of ground. Uh, you get you get a little cushion there under the wing that slow at the ground. You can see it. Tip of the, of the flap, how close is to the ground? 
Not good for bushes, for good. sure. <laughs> Ground effects. Where's that plane manufactured? Do you know? I really don't know where the Bristol is manufactured, but we can figure out. Hmm? Yeah, the two of them here. And where have they come from in the country? Both came from Buenos Aires. Oh, from Buenos Aires. From okay. Buenos Aires. Tails of Yo, baby, popped it off. He's, he's practiced. Yeah. Yep. He knew right when to ask it to fly and it popped right up. Czech Republic. Czech? Czech. Yeah. Okay. My friend's wife was from there. We went to spend New Year's. Uh, we went to like a it's cold, 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 cold at the time. We went to a ski resort and there was a health spa run by uh, Russian nuns. Have you ever had a, a massage of a Russian nun? Never. It's brutal. I fell out. <laughs> I fell out of beating up. This sounds like a Welsh joke. <laughs> no, no, it was no. true. We were waiting. It was early in the morning and somebody had forgotten to unlock the door and they started arguing and I'm on the on the bed and they start massaging and they're arguing and the more she's arguing the harder she's pounding i was i was oh, <laughs> andy and his adventures <laughs> <laughs> okay now we can see the scores on the screen right now the best takeoff at the moment was 50.5 meters from carlos and his Bristol. 50.5 is the distance to beat right now. Oh, and we're, we're, we're beaming up to Starlink. That's interesting. Pablo is moving Starlink. Antenna right now. Set up two Starlinks this year. So easy. I really like it. Yeah. And, and very good performance. Exactly. We are transmitting by Starlink at this moment. I believe we are one of the, the a few people that have Starlink yet in Argentina. Oh, really? Yes. Huh? It's, it's, not, it's not completely available here in Argentina. A friend from Chile bring that antenna and help us so we can make this live at this moment mm -hmm. so thank you very much alex for helping us with this with the starlink device thank you because with your help we can we are doing this we're doing this streaming and this live elon musk is, is listening in he texts you yeah i'm sure he maybe he will read the message that alien text to you <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be danger <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we can see Seke running with the antenna okay. yes <laughs> Please explain what what he already says. No, that's not this. <laughs> okay, we're midway in on the final, and part of that long final is just to, so you can calm down and get your get your nerves straight before you get near the ground. Long stabilized final. So if you can just get rid of all the energy right at the last moment at the line end of that long final looks pretty slow this time there he is Ooh. I believe we have a winner here 
There we go. So he landed at an angle. Is it you mark it to the furthest point forward for so the tip of the wing? Well, no, the, the furthest tire. From the tire. Furthest tire. Okay, I believe, I don't know what you think, guys, but I believe this guy... He's got it right now. Carlos is the leader of his category. Light sport aircraft. So we can see, yes, his best meters. round was 144 meters and a half for Carlos. I believe he's on the top. Of the list right now. Second place must be Bernardo, no? He was 59 yes. meters. It's third Hector, and I believe fourth Roberto. What, what are the price differences in those planes? So that yellow plane, that um, the Bristol Pedro Roberto. He wanted to say what well, I mean. How much money do you have to spend to get? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> I just know things like psych. You know, the people they start run, run, run stuff. what you brung. Yeah. Just yeah, just uh, uh, that that become can become uh, just a never-ending thing. Yeah, you. But uh, if you've got a way to. Uh, you know, what's interesting is I don't know that any of these guys in particular are, uh, that have been flown so far are, you know, intentionally here with their airplanes for stall, but they're, but they're using the, all the same disciplines to fly their planes. And, um, I think when he bought that airplane, it probably wasn't his first thought, you know, because that's a, that's a cross country airplane. He can go somewhere with that. It's very efficient. So, um, okay, guys, I have to go to the briefing and I came again. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, we can use both mics. We are live again. And this is going to be light touring category. This is Gustavo Santa Juliana. The guy that tested. This guy made the first flight of my Super Cup. You know that? Oh, really? When I bought my Super Cup, I fled from Necochea to Tres, Ar Three Arroyos, Tres Arroyos, where Gustavo and Santiago lives. We discern completely the plane. And when we put it together, Gustavo made the... Test flight. flight. Yeah. Wow. Gustavo and his son Santiago and are one of the best pilot here in this event. So let's see how they do it. Just the, is this what you brought? Okay. That's good. Thank you. I believe he hurry a little bit, yeah. perhaps in his second try. He asked it a little early. Yeah, yeah. a little, little early. Hey, that Asado yesterday was really good that you had. And you said to me, you said to me, I don't know if we're going to have enough lamb, but I knew you were joking because <laughs> the whole long string line of people, 200 people, I don't know. I think, I think they're, they were still... They were still butchering the second <laughs> lamb, and everybody, their plates were full. Yeah, uh, I know. You had five I more, that, yeah. and I didn't know. I didn't know. I mean, you know, because uh, I, I, it's the first, uh, 
first asado I've ever been to. And it that was, was your a, first asado? Yeah, and it oh, was the wow. most amazing thing. Yeah, wow, what's an honor to have to, you here in to your ex- first asado? <laughs> to, to experience uh, the asado and the, com- the, the, the group of people that you brought together here, Kike, is really amazing. Yeah, you know, thank and, you very much, and, and for the way people to enjoy the community amongst each other with asado, the social aspect of it is a really huge a really huge thing waiting the you know with the four hours i think it took to yeah. on the open fire for the for the lamb they say cook. that yesterday the cookers yeah is that what it was about four 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 and perhaps four, four and a half hours four hours cooking, and then yeah. you turn it one side for, to the turn, other yeah. one side and everybody knows to sit down then because when that's turned to the back side to the fire the the the, the flayed out lamb when it's so you to learn fastball <laughs> yes, that means 30 true. minutes yeah. and we can grab our plate and we can go exactly and sit down. perfect perfect explanation yeah, yeah. And, and how the taste was you, you enjoyed the, oh, really the taste enjoyed of the it. lamb really yeah. enjoyed it yeah and i think the only spice was salt yeah it's just the natural flavor of the lamb they were talking about the grass in this region exactly it's a good flavor it's a good flavor to exactly the, meat. The, the, the kind of the grass that they eat make mm-hmm. that flavor on the, mm-hmm. on the meat and yeah. it's awesome and i love to taste the ribs you know the flavor of the ribs and then i also had some of the roast you know so yeah. to fill up a little bit more and uh yeah so that was a really good experience with uh The Patagonic Everyone's lamb sitting. is something famous. It's, it's something really famous here. Everyone sitting in the shade of the, you know, in the in the warm afternoon, sitting in the shade. And oh, here we go. We got you uh, can see Gustavo playing, <laughs> sleeping one side to the other. He's bringing it down. Wee-hee. Let's see what he do. He's coming in a little quick. Well, he's getting rid of it now. Oh, that always slow down. Hold it through. Slide the tires. Yes, so bad. A hundred and one, I believe, from this distance. Let's see what Dario says. Dario already took the, uh, the measure. And Gustavo is turning on. Spin around. All right. That's a nice earth plane. This is yeah, a is. 172. 170 is a nice, nice airplane. Mm-hmm. Looks like a 170B with the It's a 170B, modern, exactly. With the modern flap. The yeah. Biggest flap. The folder flap. So the takeoff was 124 and a half meters and the landing 100 and a half meters. His total is 100 and I, I lose the, the number. Sorry, yeah, I was looking at the view. <laughs> <laughs> Again on his second round, tail up. Now, yes. let's see what Dario oh, says. I, I believe time. it take off before that measure. What do you think, Bob? Oh yeah, I thought he was up a little bit. Yes, me too. I believe. The judges are wrong for maybe about five meters or a little more. Five or seven. Wow, look that shot. It's really dramatic with the mountains. Yeah, you can see that eel. And look, everybody's in short sleeves. Very comfortable. It's a cool morning. Yeah. But it's a uh, very pleasant, very pleasant climate here. Middle of summer in Argentina. So we were saying earlier, this is the only event in South America. In Argentina or... Probably the only event. Yeah. PK is going to be modest about it, but I'll just tell you, this is the <laughs> only event in South America. And it's in the biggest concentration of the really the beginning of the 
unfolding the blossoming of bush flying in South America is right here in Travelin with PK's efforts here. What this is year four of you working with the bush to develop the bush flying, is that correct, KK? Yeah, it's true. We started doing here a few years ago and now we are super glad to have all those planes here, you two by my side, people <laughs> flying, people watching this online, people watching this here. This is the biggest reward we have what, on what, doing this. What I find is nice. We live in the middle. Something more. <laughs> an airplane come over, but it's, it's, it's quite a nice thing. Kiki does things with the community as well. They have the children. Uh, we feel sweets. You know, it's very much a part of the village. And there's Kiki in the rain. Dropping uh, sweets to the so kids. The funny thing was, it had rained the day before. <laughs> there was these muddy puddles. He flew behind the. Behind the, the, the Leisure center, you drop these sweets. Well, the kids ran through all the mud to get the sweets. Oh, the picture was the, the mother's faces because they go, Oh, there's Kiki. <laughs> they were waving, and all the sweets come down. And the mother, Oh my god, all the kids <laughs> straight into the mud. They're all dirty now. <laughs> but it, it, this place is very much part of the village. You feel that with it, you find So here's, here's Gustavo on a three-quarter mile final. He looks like a little high right now, but he's going to play for a little bit before he touch. Yeah. <laughs> part of his, his art. Yeah. It's part of his <laughs> he art, He liked right? to dance before yeah, right. <laughs> the approach. Save some energy for the dance, right? <laughs> yeah. Or maybe he's stable straight no, he's in. He's stable like a, more than the first try, yeah? Like a laser this time, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he can do it. He's doing it right now. Oh. A little sleep from one side to the other. Okay, let's see. Gustavo's second land. That was too much. <laughs> okay, that was Santiago, sorry, Gustavo Santa Juliana. Dario is the main, the one that takes the, the measurements. He's, from he's from my tent. He's a big friend of Patagonia Bush Pilots. He's part of our, our <coughs> great team. And the Perrascona is now on the line. He's representing my tent too. Horacio Ascona. Ascona. His nickname is Perro Dog. Perro. The dog. Mm. El Perro Ascona. Why is that? What's he done today? <laughs> we should ask. I don't know. I don't know that story. <clears throat> Okay, now the perro is rolling and take off. What do the judges have here? This plane with the orange stripe, this Cessna. Yeah. Uh, who's, who's, which plane is that? 
The third plane from the beginning yeah. of the Earthquake yeah. through here yeah. is a Cessna 172 XP with 210 horsepower. That's the one you were flying yesterday? Yes. Yeah, that's the one that was well flown yesterday. Somebody was really handling that airplane well. That must have been you, KK. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps Alejandro uh, was flying the airplane too, and he's a great pilot. Oh, okay. He's one of our main pilots here. And I believe next of the perro is coming, no, then Santiago, and in the end, Alejandro. And if we have time, perhaps I, I make a round with the XP. Oh, yeah. It's an awesome plane. Yeah. A real awesome plane. It performed very similar to a 182, but it's lighter. Mm -hmm. It eats less fuel. So I love that thing, really. Mm -hmm. How many planes are in the hangar? We have the 150, the 172 XP, the Super Cub, the Coyote, and I believe those are all the time here. I hope soon. A Kodiak, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> it will Kodiak. Be nice. It will be nice to have a Kodiak here. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe you need to. Yeah. We're making a bigger hangar. Did you build this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Myself with Emilio, with the one that cooked yesterday the lambs. Oh. The, Emilio, my friend that works in Gendarmeria, helped yeah. me every single day for 10 months to ten months. build wow. this hangar, the two of us. How long was it? It's a completely different approach that the perro is doing. It's a flatter approach. That means that he has more horizontal energy, so I believe he's going to take more distance to break. To stop. One, two, three. A little bit short. Tires are cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Those are cheap. <laughs> Those tires are cheaper than the bush ones wheels. that we use, the bush wheels. So, Bob, in a 31 bush wheel in a cab, what pressure do you recommend to use in this kind of competition? Mm. I, you, you show me with 35 making water ski with 2.2 PCI. But in a competition like this one, what do you recommend? Well, uh, he's taxing back. Well, I, <laughs> I really say that it's a balance between the amount of sidewall absorption for that contact when you run her. You just talked about him having energy horizontal with forward speed. So if it's more efficient to be vertical down exactly. to your line that you can see, and I hope the guys can see the line. Do they have some fresh chalk to put on the line occasionally yeah, to, to mark it if they, they need they to? They see to the side very better, it's, the line, because it's, it's wider and you have two flags each, each side and a cone. So it's, oh, they've it's got easier a good from, definition. Okay, very from good. the thing to see it. Yep. Oh yeah, I see the cones from here. Mm. So, the, so and here we go for takeoff number two. We can talk about that tire pressure thing in a minute because it's a big, it's a big topic. Yeah, I know. We'll get the second takeoff on, and we'll talk about it on the downwind here. Hey, Sebastian is telling the perro where is the place to stop the plane before the takeoff, and he's free to go, I believe, right now. So. <coughs> I've seen the extension of the nose wheel shock when he take off. Mm -hmm. It keeps going out. Yeah. yeah. yeah so on the on the uh, tires, you don't want them so. You want them soft enough that with the suspension, whatever the shocks are, that there's a marriage of pressure so that when you come in on that landing, that 
it doesn't hop. It's hard to take, have them flat enough that it, it, take up it doesn't have meters. a hop. <coughs> 110 meters, yeah. It's like a takeoff or a ratio. It's gonna. The thing is, so Oh, we are on on the screen right now. <laughs> oh, hello. There we go. <laughs> There's the camera right out there at the runway. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, to who is watching us here. Thank you for following what we are doing here at Patagonia. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is a moment when uh, I don't. This is very well covered. This is very well covered. Oh, Put it out here to the world. Many, you know, place, many places to stay when people come. <coughs> Tourists. <coughs> dragon. Your own dragon? Oh yeah, yeah, I did on the roof. Yeah, the fire breathing dragon. Yeah, up on the roof of the house. You see it throwing yeah. fire from the mouth? No, no. no, no. Eight yeah. antenna. Yeah. Oh. oh. But we have an artist. Yes, he's a force engineer. Beautiful. Where is that? I will check it out. Oh, well. <laughs> So we will falls, visit those places. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Super yeah. near. And, uh, yeah. I think he's actually got a dinosaur. Way to, uh, yes, to the he made a dinosaur too. He's a great artist. Right? Outdoor we'll sculptures. Outdoor, outdoor sculptures. Outdoor big outdoor, outdoor steel sculptures. Yeah. 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 But we yes, are realistic in town. shape. He do realistic, realistic things. Yeah. Okay, Pedro is on the on his final. And here, and here, short final. He's looking ahead. From our perspective, it looks like you did a good job just getting across the line and, and getting down. Yeah. Great job, Perro. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You can see it. <coughs> 131, perhaps. Oh, 170 is back. Ah, now it's Santiago, Santa Juliana turn. Santiago is one of my best friends in Argentina Aviation. Oh, really? Well, yes. Great. He's a great kid, a great pilot. This is the son of oh. Exactly. Both are crop duster pilots. They have a few planes in Buenos Aires. And they fly since they born. Hmm. You see their fuel system, in the, the long range fuel? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh? I show yeah, them my fuel system and they copy my fuel system. <laughs> oh, okay. With a... They had the containers. A lot more of fuel. <laughs> I only carried 40 liters and they came with 80. Now Santi, his tail is on the air. One, two, three, go! Yes! Great! Take off for Santiago Santa Juliana. So this is the sun now. This is yes, sun, this right? is Gustavo Sun. Oh. So, so if he's improved on his father, that's going to be an awkward. It just happens. <laughs> it just happens. Don't worry about you it. You know don't about that. Go, huh? go, <laughs> you can go. tell us your story about that. Go with it. Yeah, that's right. It's an evolution. It's, you're, you're just happy with that. When exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see the number. I'm so happy Santiago and Gustavo are here because they are a real big part of Patagonia Bush Pilot. They helped me a lot buying my Super Cab 
you know, Bob, that having a super gap is not a super easy plane to have. It's like uh, something important in the aviation community to, to be a cap pilot is something kind of different. 83 meters. 83 meters from Santi. Great. Great performance. I believe it's going to be hard to beat that takeoff in this category. I just have noticed here that everything everything's a little more difficult in Argentina too. For sure. if that's what your topic is. Yeah. Yes. And and to have uh, you know everything from fuel to just everything is more difficult. Everything has to be imported. Airplanes have to be imported. And, and as we know, the bush flying has actually caught on more recently. So so the in the world so and here we are short final not wasting any time to make it <laughs> to make it stable. stable wait 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 Oops. i hope he's not unqualified short. disqualified he's make a real short landing that was very graceful don't look the crowd's the crowd. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Great job, Santi. Oh, is it, the, the line judges say that's a clean. It's a clean. Uh, Grande Santi, papa. That was a clean disqualified. Disqualified, no. Oh, he touched before the line. Well, that's too bad. It was. Well, this little gas we are feeling here right now can it's help very, Santiago very to yeah. take off shortly. I hope he can use it. This is stopping right now, the gas, but let's see. Yes. 85, 84, or 7, no, it's 80, 80 something is going to be. <clears throat> you can see here, from here, the XP running right now. The engine of Patagonia Bush pilot plane is on right now. Breeze gets cool, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel that breeze. <laughs> 15 degrees at the moment. Well, if he can come back 84 around. 84 meters, 84.5 meters. So it's a little bit longer than the last. If he can come back around on his, uh, on his second attempt and make the same landing just, just over the line, that's going to be the shortest by far for the day. Yes. We we're saying it's quite well marked with cones and lines, so there's no excuses. Well, Should no, there's, it? there's a, it's, 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 where is it? It's yeah. always a, it's, it's a, it's And I believe from the view of the drone is better than where we are to yeah. see the touch. Just turn it in. So this is incredible. We are perhaps 120 meters from the touch line, but the best view is from the drone. They changed the view. Whoa, whoa, oh. Help. Mm, I don't know. No, <coughs> Vamos, Santi. Vamos, Santi. Let's see the number that was in, the judge it says. 79 and a half meters. It was the shortest. 
I don't remember the Bristol number, but it's a different category. So Santiago, I believe, is on the top of the list. He's gonna, yep. it's gonna be hard to beat this guy. Up is Alejandro Wright is going to be the next. He's representing the, the Bush Pilots at the moment. He's representing us. Yes. Okay, guys, after Alejandro, I'm gonna make a try, so I yeah, good. along yeah, yeah. here, yeah? Show us, show us what you do, King. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to beat <laughs> Santiago. After Alejandro's takeoff, Rodrigo is going to pick me up here. So, so enough. is one of the, the Bright family, so you have Bernardo, I think he's the cousin of Bernardo. Yes, it is. And they have a small engineering firm on the other side of Germania. Vitus is the father. Yes, Vitus uh, Bright was one of the first pilots here in Trevelin. Uh, he used to have a Navion, and, and that plane is just behind us in the green hangar. That plane was flipped over with a guest a few years ago, and Vitus' father took perhaps 10 years to put it back together and he died before he could fly it again. So last year we, we helped Alejandro eh, Bernardo, that is the, the youngest son of Vitus, and we put it all back together and make the test flight of the plane. Now Alejandro is going to the mark. Yeah, that was a really good asado yesterday. Didn't see the guys at uh, didn't see the guys uh, practicing too much, you know, during the day. Uh, of course, it was windy. You know, it's yeah. kind of windy, and it got hot later. But, uh, it was a bit of a wild morning, I think. With that, with that bombing. <laughs> the and we had the flower, flower bombing yesterday. Uh, there people meters. flew during that. Eight meters for like yeah, one hundred eight. Do so you have family here? Yeah, well, my wife's family. Your wife's family. So she was from here, and she, she was over there at your college when you were in Wales. Yeah, the uh, Roberts. I think that's.
Ну, что, пробуем опять заметить. Yeah. Right. I mean, that first Asado experience is quite amazing. And we're a short final. Looks very stable. Yeah. Will he make it? I think he was before the line. Yeah. gonna taxi back and give it a second try. I see he's still got the passenger seat in that airplane. Be one little bit of weight he could take out, you know, it only yeah. takes about a minute. energy it takes to organize it. TK's been going non-stop for quite a long time. So here he comes for a second or two. As I mentioned, I was in I was in Wales hiking around with a backpack when I was about 15 years old. Quite beautiful, very beautiful country. And here we got the line. Three and a half miles an hour of, no, of headwind on the nose there, and I tell you that's that makes a big difference compared to it was calm earlier. For the lighter airplanes, it was very calm. Uh, see and take off distances bigger. 172 XP, uh, you know, is uh, is shorter than the. It's a, that's a great airplane. Uh, that little wind is helping in the and. And it's shorter than the lighter aircraft were, than the, than the lighter sport, the lighter weight airplanes. Took more runway than this. Yeah. The, uh, did you notice when he took off, the, the left main wheel stopped almost immediately. So that brake is dragging on the not hurt him at all on landing. He's drag, a little bit of drag, yeah. So he named the mountains of Irwin the same as, yes. Yeah, so. I think it's in Jones because it came from the area. Oh, like yeah. People here at Kansas Jones. Oh? So when did, uh, when, how many generations ago did people come from Wales to this part of Argentina? Mid 1800s? Yeah, I should know this because it's 1865. Okay, so similar to the expansion of the West in America is an expansion here. So now we're in a short final. 
172 XP. Oh, drag a little more power. Can we make the line. Tires are cheap, right? He slid her to a stop. That's that brake. <coughs> From where we are, we can't see if they've got the if they're uh, got a legal a legal landing or not. We have to wait to hear it from the judges. Yeah. Like Kiko said, to, to get things here, to get uh, parts and equipment, and maybe it'll change this next few years. I don't know. 128, 128 meters. meters. Okay, so it's a good, good landing. Switching pilots now to KK. So what's the, do you know the tail number on that aircraft? So that's the 170, is Guliana, so the... Lima, Victor. Okay, all right, here we are, KK, yep, yeah. yeah. let's see, he's gonna... Hail Bragg to KK, there's, that's a Welsh name now, isn't it? Right there. Is that German? B R A I G? Oh, there he goes, pulling out the seat. He says he's very casual, but he's very competitive. Fact. Did I say that in front of him? Oh no, I see he'd already left when I said yeah, pull out the left. seat. When my son and I were competing at Valdez, we were winning and we had to stay winning. I remember he had a, he had a coat like this that we yeah. two ounces. But when he got in the plane, he didn't need it anymore. So he turned on a little heat. And so he would hand me the coat after, you know, we'd take the coat off as he got in the plane and hand me the coat. Just one less, one couple of ounces yeah. less. I wonder how much fuel they've got on board. They obviously didn't have to add fuel for KK to go. Here is KK coming up to the line. What's he down at? He's at 85, 80, between 80 and, 80 and 90, so probably somewhere around 85. Yeah. Feels about 
102 meters is right, and uh, 186 total. Good bit cooler today. That's good for the competition. Yes. It's been quite hot. I wore shorts down here today, and first day I had on uh, two days ago, I had on long pants all day and everybody else is in shorts. I said, I'm wearing shorts. Today is cool. Very cool. We've got that smoke and the cloud of high thin overcast. It keeps the sun off the ground. Oh, he's a little higher this time. Slipping her in. Yeah, he's slipping it down. He's really coming on down. But he carried a little more energy that time. Well, he got a first, the first one was a good pair. Excuse <coughs> me. Yeah, so I got a little, uh, got this cough here. And almost at the end of a cold. It's a cold I picked up in Chile. Don't worry, it's not an Argentine cold. It's a Chilean cold. It it's long gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we got our water truck rolling across the way here. No detail unmissed. So how is it you're from France and you came here to Buenos Aires to get to a flight school Right. you ended up here in Trevain. So how, how did that go? Right. And so I was looking for a flight school and I chat with um, people on Instagram, who t like random pilots I found, um, who told me that the best place to, to fly here in Patagonia was uh, right here in Trevelin with KK and Patagonia Bush Pilot. Um, and um, and yeah, so I, I chatted with Gay. I did my benchmark. I was a bit worried about coming to 
tiny town by myself. Um, but yeah, I came and it, it's just magical to be able to to take off uh, immediately without it having to like wait. And uh, I've been here for three months now. Oh, for three months training yeah. here with PK and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm hour thirty two now. I'm eight hours left. Okay, so almost there. Yeah, yeah, almost there. And you speak Spanish a little bit, poquito. Yeah, yeah. So my my in Buenos Aires, I was not. My my Spanish was kind of flatlining because uh, like most of my friends spoke English very well, but um, here people don't speak English that much, so it makes you speak a lot more. And my <laughs> Spanish got to be better. Like, I mean, I've been here eight years, and what I find is I I, I seek out English speakers just because now and again I just want to speak easy. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, have to, I have to think uh, to speak Spanish. Where did you learn Spanish? Um, here or yeah in a bar not so far away oh god okay <laughs> yeah so i've never actually stood i just listen and that's why i got so much um bad language oh yeah you know at the time <laughs> you, don't, you don't realize how offensive it is but you start chatting no they say the the dictionary for bad language in argentina is actually bigger than the the normal dictionary so oh many, that's possible so yeah yeah, yeah yeah like like family <laughs> members and like yeah. all the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and of course, you're, you're French, so you'll be an expert on food. How do you find the food here? Uh, food is great. My favorite food is um, the Lomo de Bife. Okay. Um, yeah, that's really good here. We we have we eat a lot of like imported Argentinian food in, in like beef in France, but yep. it's not as good as here for sure. No, they keep the good stuff here. My, my friend, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's from possible, France, yeah. and he said, "No, the best the best wine is still in France. We, we only export the stuff." We <laughs> that's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wine is good here as well, for sure. Yeah. My first time here was maybe 20 years ago, and it's amazing how it's it's grown slowly, but it's grown in, a, in an interesting way, uh, prevailing and, and it's a quality way, you know. It's, it's, uh, oh, yeah, and, what have you seen in 20 years here? What's been the change? Well, the houses get built slowly. That's one thing I have noticed. You know, people, um, they tend to um, buy materials when they have cash so you can take four or five years to build your own house uh, who's this coming in well we've got the arrow returning not part of the competition but a very nice fellow from Buenos Aires took some friends out for a flight yeah but uh, there were always people who who liked um, making things here and uh, now it's become a more of a, a way of making a living I think it was mainly farming uh, before, but now people get time to, uh, I don't know, expand on the things they really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we've got artists, we've got a lot of athletes. So over in Eskel, um, there's a running club and they've got two Olympic athletes here. Oh, really? Yeah, marathon runners, there are a lot of um, mountain <coughs> runners and, and uh, distance runners in, in the area who compete on a world level. But for a small, a couple of small towns, it's, you know, there's a good uh, high, High level of competition. One's a marathoner, and who's and what's well, there's, the other? There's two Olympic marathon. There's uh, oh, oh, both are marathoners. Okay. And then there's um, people like Sergio Trekman, and uh, they're, they're mountain runners. And they, I think Sergio actually competed in Wales. I saw him there uh, once. Um, but it's a nice place to train. Like, I don't know if it's we're not that high. Oh, this not... climate! This climate! It's, it's like the best of Colorado. It's like the best of California. Yeah. It's it's a very pleasant climate. Yeah. yeah. And there's some beautiful trails, you know, all the mountains that we see around us, there are trails that you can go trail running quite, quite easily. So, uh, for me, it's a, it's a really nice, nice place to live. Mm. And, and all the country, all the open country. Yeah. 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 So we got the leaderboard here and the leaderboard has Santiago, Santiago, Guiana, Guiana, excuse me. Santiago Guiani in the Cessna 170, uh, 164 meters, followed by Kike in the 172 XP at 186 and a half meters, then Gustavo Guiliana, and let's see, let's see, that's, uh, so the son, the son is, is, winning. is, is winning, yeah, it's the father, Gustavo Guiliana, it's, it, it's 220 meters. And then uh, number fourth is Alejandro Bragg, also in the 172 XP at 230 meters. And last was uh, Horacio Scona 
in the 172 at 241 meters. So, so we've got. Uh, so your your son competes. Five. Your son and you competed. How would uh, you, yeah. As a father talking down to your son who's just beaten you, how would you? <laughs> well, in in our particular case, uh, uh, I spent a lot of the time. The, the, we were six years involved, and for the last five years, we uh, we won first place at Valdez. Uh, three years we were in the push class, and then the last two years we were in the unlimited class. And uh, uh, and in that, in during all those five six years, I was really the coach, and my son was the one doing the practice. You know, I was I was making sure we had our food and our sleep and the airplanes and our travel and everything organized so that we could do the event and just try to create this vacuum of time and space so that my son Bobby could could blossom and just on a cool morning like we had this morning we could go out and practice you know if you go out and practice and shoot three or four or five landings for practice in a row um, and I'd stand at the line while he would do that, uh, you know, and I would not say a word. I would just be there and be aware. And he'd go out and do three or four or five landings in a row and come back in and I'd kind of wave him down or he'd just come and stop. And uh, we just chat for a minute, maybe have a bite to eat or just stretch legs for a moment. And then when he'd get back in the plane and again, I would just keep a calm environment with the space of time available, he'd get back in the plane and go fly a second sequence of three or five takeoffs and landings. And those next sequence will always be tighter, always be shorter and more consistent than the first the first seg segment. So he'd go run those out and then uh, go fly those and then again land, you know, not, not not just continue, but just, you know, be in the air for 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes. And he'd go back out and land again, uh, or or go, go back out, land again, and we'd take another break. And that third sequence, again, would be uh, uh, a uh, shorter group, a, a tighter group, and he was, he'd be more comfortable. And then that might be time just to call it a day. So as coach, I got a lot of a uh, sense of satisfaction just seeing his just seeing how the progress can be refined and, and tweaking little things on the plane and keeping only enough fuel you know i was always making sure we obviously have enough fuel but to yeah. keep the, you know to monitor things so that we're not carrying any extra weight uh you know so that was quite something so so we did that for five years and then when he graduated from college and he was hired to uh, by Delta Airlines to be a uh, actually with Endeavor. He was hired by Endeavor um, to go to school again to basically learn to fly jets. He, he first flew the CRJ 200, smallest commercial airliner I think there is. And uh, at that time, um, and I said, nope, you need to go. Let's just leave the Valdi stuff alone. We've got five years of continuous wins. Yeah. Why don't you just go on and uh, focus on flying a jet? Because I've never done that, and you haven't done it before. And you need to put your all of this creativity, this this training and thought, and the disciplines you've learned in the stole world yes. into learning to fly that jet. And so he did that, and he walked away from it. I think that was hard initially for him, but uh, you know, aircraft companies were offering him airplanes. He wanted him to feature their airplanes so it would look good and you know free airplanes to fly you know and but he turned all that, that turned that down and um uh now he's uh now he's a first officer with with delta on the 757 767 and he's um and he really enjoys his career and he's making money he's a, you know he's, he's 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 married and he supports his wife and they've got a they've got a two-month-old baby now so he's built a whole life around it yeah so it's uh it's been a really it's been a really positive experience all the way nice, around that's a nice uh I can back up. yeah so when you say well if, how is it when your son cannot perform you with that it's like well it's 
fine let them go yeah, let yeah, them yeah. do it you know it's kind yeah. of part of the natural progression you know you want to see your children do well you know yeah. so so that's how the, that's that and uh and then last night you know i got some news last night i i got some news in the middle of the night i got up and my phone had 10 messages all from one 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 spot so i looked to see what it was about and and bobby's my son's well my daughter Brittany, she had her first baby last oh, night oh gosh yeah so i got that news in the middle of the night last Fantastic. night so I, second grandchild is yeah. just a few hours old at this point awesome. so hey we've got our third we've got our we were in the super cup bush class oh, yeah, here so now. this is this is where uh, where keke should be dominating mm -hmm. So we Gustavo yeah. Adler. Gustavo uh, Adler is the, is the next one, and he's uh, the first one to go in uh, the uh, the regular Bush class of Super Cub. He's got that really cool green, yeah. that iridescent yeah. green. But how, how that you know from Wales, you know greens. So yeah, tell yeah. me, what do you what? How do you define that green on that airplane? I don't know. I'd just say uh, green. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I like it. It's in the metallic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of metallic, isn't yeah. it? It's a little shiny. It's a little bit shiny. It's got, uh, yeah, I don't know how well it'll show up on the cameras, but maybe when the plane goes by, it'll, it'll pick it up. Uh, the nice thing, <clears> they, <throat> like some, um, last year they were, they were parked around and you could walk up to the, to the planes. You know, there's people take a lot of pride in maintaining their pre general condition of the planes here. Excuse me. Yep, he's got a good finish in it. He's getting himself warmed up. And uh, he's a nice guy, real smooth guy. I talked to him over the past couple of days. I'm trying to remember where he said he came from, but somewhere north of here. Somewhere along the mountains north of here. And this country stretches. I mean, you can be from a thousand miles away. And point next. Yeah. It's a long, long country. Did some bus journeys around. I Longest time. Driving? No, oh, sat on the bus. Sat on a bus. And then we stopped one now and again to use the. <coughs> That's a long bus ride. You know, I thought I was pretty proud of you. Know, Sleeping two nights in a row in a bus. Yeah. And then somebody came along and said, well, we've just done 50 hours from Brazil, so. The buses, they're, they're quite comfortable. They're wide seats. They don't go perfectly flat. Hmm. Yeah. The scale to say is two hours. You, you've flown in here on the commercial aerolinius flights. I have not. As they come in, you've got the turbulence. And the first time you think, oh my god, you think you're going to crash. But the pilots are so good. You really understand. That was a flight arriving into where? Arriving into, uh, into a scale. Oh, into a scale, okay. It can be rough near there, yeah. Is that right? Got that same three and a half miles an hour steady wind right down the runway, and that's really can 
We really can't complain about that. Now, I didn't notice the density altitude earlier, but it's 1,340 feet now. So that's, uh, that's only going to climb through the day. It's going to get thinner air, which isn't going to help. But if they can fly everybody in each class relative, if everybody in each class flies at about the same time, it'll be at about the same density altitude to be equal for each pilot. So how will uh, the next round of the competition, everybody will have, have um, the run, the top two from each class will compete? Oh no, I think this is the main, the main event. Uh, I don't think we're going to have any, I don't think we're going to have anybody that ties. You know, you have to have a flight to break a tie. I think where is our absolute distances? So we're in the we're in the we're in the bush class now, and this is the this is a class that uh, is uh, usually in Alaska is the the biggest number of people, you know, biggest number of super cubs. There might be thirty super cubs that compete, and then uh, you know, ten or fifteen, at the most in the other classes. Uh, super cub is the workhorse that. In Alaska that you see so many of. I was at a stole competition in New Zealand um, a couple of years ago, three or four years ago, and uh, there it was Cessna Skywag. This the big, the big Cessnas over here. They had 25 of those that flew because people with different branches or stanches had uh, flew those airplanes. Um, and it was hot there, and they still, they flew them well. But uh, here's the exciting bush glass. Oh, yeah, we do have a... Yeah, we've got a, perhaps a Robinson coming in here. It's out by the long... Yeah, uh, that's uh, arriving. So I think these guys are all... These are, it's a public use airport, so it's kind of a common thing. Stop and yeah, the, the, how old is the Super Cup design? Mm. Well, here comes uh, Stavo up to the line, and uh, that's a long question. That's a but the safe the answer to that is to say it's venerable. It's an old design. Yeah. The actual Super Cub, I think, was first first built in the early 50s or 40s, as it's as it is today, as a PA-18. But it had come from a Cub that was developed as far back as the 30s. The technology was there. There's Gustavo at the line. Ready for his first run and the first man in the, the bush class. And we've got a good breeze. It's up now. Yeah, it's just I'm going to say it's at least five to seven now. <coughs> Rather steady. Rather steady. What I've noticed is on the leading edge of the wings, uh, some of them have these small little fins that they've stuck on. Oh, the VGs, yeah. yeah. And what's the benefit of that? It's they let you, they let the wing, they create a little vortice behind them and that vortice will hold as the wing gets to a bigger higher angle of attack those vortices will remain attached keep the airflow attached to the top of the wing instead of a big slab of air breaking free yeah. the vortices activate a thicker layer of air and uh, 
Gustavo's just getting all smooth and ready. Maybe waiting for that helicopter to stop entirely its rotor. Or he might just be calming his nerves. Or waiting for the gust that just dropped calm. He wouldn't. He had a good breeze when he first pulled in the line. Yeah, the, uh, the wind socks, yeah. Wind socks, I think. Oh, but here he goes. We got it up clean. They're marking that at uh, 85, something like that. More coffee with whiskey soon. Guinea. Yeah. Very peaceful and relaxed here. Very relaxed. The lady just offered us, came up to offer us a little coffee and water if we need it. And we got one airplane in the pattern at a time. It's just low pressure. Nice and easy. Stavo turning into his final. See if he's got himself. Five on the nose, according to what it says. And he's carrying power. Yeah. Yeah, pretty sure he's before the line. Yeah, well before the line. Yeah, he's not even going to stop for that. He knows he was... Second, take off. First one, I think he asked it to fly a little earlier, and it was clean. He kept it in the air, but this one he asked a little later, and so he was very confident to stay airborne. You said it's a, this is a public airstrip. There are a few private airstrips around the place. Oh yeah. Up in Lago Rosario, I think there's one in Cholila also. I guess that's the beauty of having such a big country. <laughs> you can start to put your own your own airstrip in. Oh yeah, and how many people around the world would love to have the elbow room to be able to go out somewhere and and uh, forge your own airstrip under the into the terrain to go out and fly around and Pretty countryside. A lot of people here in in uh, at this flying have come from Buenos Aires, you know, where yeah. it's where the employment is, you know, where the businesses businesses in the cities. If they can have their airplane, they can get out here. No, uh, 
TK is looking at this, you know, sort of being a mecca, a place to go to, a place away from the city. So, oh, and here's Gustavo on landing number two. This time, three mile an hour wind. Thanks, Loriana. I'm referencing like from the orange cone, and he looks very close in the line. Yep, we gotta wait in here. Is this on? Wait to hear. Yep, so he's got a total of uh, 165 meters mm -hmm. in the second round. So that last landing was 80 meters. 85 meters for the takeoff. And Oh, it's the Guillermo. Guillermo. Also, Mayu. Must be in the same. Yes, they're, they're using the same plane there. You know the plane. I've seen the plane in the hangar. Oh, here you go. Here, mom. Clean takeoff. The judges are moving down. As you can see, the action is closer to the takeoff line as it gets shorter here. All the restored cars are quite the thing, huh? Coming in.
last year with Philip Towns was that it's a uh, yeah, really life and stuff. So tell me about the, tell us about the event last year. What was that like compared to this year? Mm -hmm. uh, well, last year it was, it was hot. Uh, we didn't have much shade. Um, and the planes were all on this side of the uh, runway. Oh. So people were walking amongst the planes, which is nice, but it's also, there's a risk there because they touch things they shouldn't touch. Uh, I think this year it's, it's much better. Generally improving little by little, you know, uh, taking some feedback uh, from what the people <laughs> the event are saying. Uh, there's more stuff for the children this year because uh, it's nice to come with your kids, but you want to look at stuff and the kids are, <laughs> are pulling on your, your sleeve. Oh, they want right. this, they want that. So uh, we've got some uh, bounty castles and some, some games and stuff now for the kids. We've got the, the tent that we've got from the, the council. We've lent them the tent for. Oh, is that that big white tent? Yeah. yeah And uh, well, let's see what the music is like. I mean, the band last year were really good. Oh, for tonight? Yeah, for Big tonight. Music yeah. night. Yeah. But, but Sundays is a very uh, family thing here. The plaza in Trevelyan, after about four o'clock, everybody comes from wherever, from the scale, and they just drive around the, the plaza and there's, there's a ferrier. And they just sit oh, and have with the family, play football. Um, really? So yeah. it's, a, it's a family night to go to town. Oh, yeah, very just interesting. in the afternoon and you just meet up with people uh, because a lot of people live on farms. Sometimes just the weekend is when they come into, into town. So it's a, it's a very social, social event. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sunday afternoons. <coughs> and one of the things we'd like to try and do is bring people from the plaza. You can walk. It's a nice walk along the river. You cross the bridge and you come to the hangar. So one of the things we'd like to be able to do is have somewhere they can sit and have a coffee and just walk to planes. Mm -hmm. Because that's make it part of the community. Is, yeah, make it part where they can just sit and watch. There's a gate up here like on the other side of the runway. We don't have access to the cameras, but the, just straight across the field here, maybe yeah. you can see there's a gate that's a, out the up the opposite side of the airport here. And um, there were boys there yesterday on the motorcycles that stopped to to just look down here I was up there and they were going real slow and they could peer down and see what's going on yeah. and it's good to have those kind of people have access to the airplanes yeah. so they can you know somehow become a part of it some tight someday yeah well it's, it's something to aspire to you know i'd love to be one of the things i want, I want to try and do is, is learn to fly so, yeah well here we've got um <clears throat> On short final, the wind is still the same, 3.8. He's doing really well. Oh, oh sinking out. Nice. That's costing. Looks like he, <coughs> sa he saved the run, but he, he gave himself. Well, it ends well. Yeah. yeah, so just at the other end of this very same airport, just off the airport property, but right right adjacent to it is a big uh, big horse grounds down there. Yeah, the, and yesterday there must have been Campo Kineteada, the uh, rodeo. Rodeo. The rodeo. They do they do a couple of events. They do the rodeo uh, with the, the the green horses and they hang on for as long as they can but there's another event where they go in and out of the barrels mm. which is quite familiar Barrel racing yeah, yeah. so uh, very much the culture here there's, there's, uh, horses everybody loves loves horses you know you see them around the streets um, we're, we're, we're okay Quite funny. Another another beautiful lady offered us some more coffee. So, yeah. that's, that's, so we've got uh, so yeah. So let's see now who 
Guillermo's this will be second this will be one, he's got Tinti. 167, so they're switching out pilots now yeah. to Tinti. So 68 Tinti meters for the first, the second takeoff. Second takeoff, 68 meters, landing 99. 167 meters. So the, uh, there's horse grounds down there, the rodeo grounds, just a big green field, the fence all around it, and there's just, you know, we've got so many people on horseback that are just on beautifully, beautiful, well-trained horses yeah. that are around, and then they put the young guys on these unbroken horses, they tie the horse's head to a post so that he can get his, get on the horse, and yeah. there's three or four people helping him to hold the horse and get on the horse, and then they, uh, then they turn the horse loose, and the, the rider actually has to encourage the horse to buck and to yeah. not, because, not and, then, and, and then also to try not to fall off, so apparently if the horse doesn't get get to bucking you don't get a much of a score so you want yeah. the horse as active as possible yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can still hold on so it's like a little arc to it and everybody's dressed in big in so black uh what do you call those black big wide mushroom top uh i know uh, uh sombreros black hats yeah uh, yeah they're always <laughs> It makes me laugh because I see them go with they pass my house and they're always well dressed these guys, you know. They, yeah, they're well dressed. They're yeah. all but somehow they deteriorate through the day as they drink more wine and eat more meat. And the <laughs> horses just know the way home. Because <laughs> these guys are they're just so pissed. You know, they they're hanging on and they they've got a mate with them as well sometimes and they just the horses know which way to, to get them back home. Oh. But they, they for some of the, some of these guys it's their their main event of the year. Like it is here for the stall. You know, these guys are they're running on the, the same day. Yeah. Uh, so far, so good. Have you drank out of a, a bota? Oh, I never have. I have one of those. Oh, there's, uh, there's a but lot I've never it. used one here. I've never used one in its in its context of the, of the land that it's normal. We'll have to try and do that. It's a sad. <laughs> and here's Tinty back seat up for his first goal. <coughs> Wonder how much fuel they're carrying. They're carrying enough fuel I'm curious how for can... both of them to do yeah. this flight. So it's a, you it's know, the a if you, you know, penalty for the first guy. Yeah, it's penalty. It. it is. I think. Um... get to fly a little bit early but their judges are walking back the market power wait power wait when i was uh, 15 16 i used to help a guy in a, a garage <coughs> vintage racing cars 750 cc engines austin sevens and uh would go competing around the tracks in, in the uk and yeah we'd, we'd weigh everything every Gram. Every gram. Yeah, because, I mean, it was vintage, and it was. Uh, on a, you still want to. Did weight. you have to be the same weight, or did you? Were they balancing the weights of the cars, or was it more like wrong what you brung and bring it as light as you can you bring, bring it? Bring it as light as you can. Yeah, there was a safety. Everything was in because you know, people can make things too light unless they break. Uh, and it was a fun thing. It wasn't too competitive. Once you once you've done a few races, people start to like, just skim a piece off here. And fuel was always the thing that we were always weighing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we, you know, it doesn't take much fuel to do this. So, you know, if people fly here and they don't have a way to drain their fuel, it's, uh, fuel is so, such a big deal to get in this country. Just people that fly across the country have to make a lot of phone calls and arrangements to make sure yeah. they'll have fuel. So here we are, short final. Tinty on his first landing. Mm -hmm. 
I think he made it. He spun because uh, one break was dragging more than the other, or was the way he did the controls? Why did he spin like that? Yeah, so, you know, there's. As you know, there's separate brakes on each on each yeah. wheel, and if when the tail came up, he was a little worried about it breaking too much. When he released the brakes, he probably saw he was turning a little bit in one direction. Well, when he released the brakes, it kind of spun him around the other way. Yeah. He released a brake on one side, and then it you know it spun. It was more important just to get stopped than it was to be straight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we used to do them at fiddle brakes, I think we used to call them on the trials cars. As they go and you lock one side so you could spin around the tree and the, the post. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He lined himself up quite quickly for the... So, these super cubs, you know, they, <coughs> they can spin around so quickly. Oh yeah. Guy in the 170s was doing a nice job earlier. He'd get his speed and then he'd, and then he'd get his speed and then he'd kick the rudder and it just idle around the turn and wouldn't get any dirt in the prop. Tinty's number two. Yeah, you can see the Judges are gonna call a. Yeah, he, he popped it up. What, what did he holler in Spanish when he before he took off the drone? Leave it. It sounded like in English. It sounded like leave it. Oh, I hear the horse grounds going again. Yeah, so these, uh, and they have what they call a bachador, like the clown singer, you know, and he'll be narrating things that have happened uh, to music. Oh, know? yeah? And, yeah, and it's just like a, a bit of a song, a bit of a funny thing to do as they're, as they're watching the guys get flung around by the horses. Oh. <laughs> it's quite a brutal thing to watch, but uh, they compete. Some of these guys compete and they earn a lot of money. You know, they, it's a, I guess it's the same as the rodeo in, in the USA. You dedicate your, your life, to life to it and you follow the, the competitions around the country. Yeah, well, they said a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of ego. I mean, there's a lot of pride in it. Yeah. It's, I mean, we're doing the same thing down here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kudos. <laughs> yeah, kudos. kudos. You get street cred. Yeah, and I guess it's, in this case for the horses, it's honor for the whole family and... and, and these guys that are working the horses on on these ranches, it, do you realize who's competent? Yeah. So we've got we got Tinty on his landing number two here. And stable. Well, that looked like a real nice. Yeah. But just the everything was very smooth and stable looking there. Yeah. It's difficult to see from here. If the again, you know, if he's on the line. There's some great shots. But if he is on the line... <coughs> so as short as take off... If he take is off on the, the line, round. then he's definitely got... Yeah. He's definitely got a good... If, if, if that was clean, that was just a, just a beautiful flight. Yep, that was clean. So total 148. 148. Yeah, well, his first was 143. So. See ya. <laughs> Thank you. 
Look, his landings are both 85 and 86 meters. Yeah. 85 and 86 meters, so he's within just one meter. Yeah, so he's got that um, constant. 1% basically uh, spread between. It's very consistent. And here comes Kike, guy who's... How many people has he gotten together to to uh, create, to, to put their efforts into making this a day? He's I got, what, 30 people working probably, or 50? Yeah. People with different roles to make today come together. Yeah, well, it's been a long time uh, preparing, talking about this event, you know, well, since last year. So um, we were always looking at where we could improve uh, from the last year's event. He's playing. <laughs> he loves now. it. He loves it. Now he's going to pop it up. <coughs> so let's see how short that was. We were talking here about the, the size of the tires. So those bush tires are a real advantage to the bush flying, but a disadvantage to stall because they're big and heavy. Well, there's a little... It's nice to have a little cushion in the tires that's that's a good thing you don't you know but uh yeah the, the biggest tires are 35s are 40 are 40 pounds heavier than the 31s and the 31s are gosh i don't know 20 pounds heavier than the 26s and of course the braking the the the, the diameter of the tire is uh, you know, doesn't help the, uh, the diameter tire works again, the larger the diameter of the tire, it works against the diameter of the brake. Yeah. So you're more leverage, more effective if it's with a smaller tire, on, especially on the smooth gravel, smooth gravel situation. So he's in a short loop, so he's coming back in now. Yep. First in. landing. Let's hope he gets good and stable. Yep. Good and stabilized. Four and a half knots now, it says on the nose. It looks, the windsock looks pretty straight down the runway. It was a good call to change it to today. Yeah. Yeah, Andy, so here's uh, PK on short final for his first attempt at landing. I'll drop down so smoothly. He knows he's he knows he's scratched. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that's before the line. There's no pressure on him. He created this whole event. Yeah, and he you lives know, here. And he lives here. <laughs> and everybody came. No pressure on him to do well. Don't worry, KK. <laughs> He'll be fine. Don't worry. It's okay. I mean, his takeoff was, I think it was the shortest, 55 meters. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's sure. done shorter. We've got more and more uh, public turning up now. A lot of the stands are uh, uh, setting up. Must be getting towards lunchtime, I'm thinking. What time are we looking? 11. Yep, yeah, 11 o'clock. 
so yeah. You must be chilly. That wind is now up. It is now it? stronger, and you got a short sleeve shirt on. Yeah, it's a bit chilly, but it's okay. Got our first Skywagon warming up. I don't know if he's going to be in the competition or or not. But he's he's warming up now. Heavy touring is next. Touring After is next. key case, the next down. landing, it's going to be the beginning for heavy touring. Three point eight. That same number we've seen earlier today. Three point eight knots of wind right down the runway. <coughs> Still thirteen hundred forty. Oh, now a six point seven gust. How are you doing there, Kike? That looked pretty tight. Yeah. That looked pretty tight. Well, the crowd are closing, so yeah. it must have been. <laughs> yeah, I think he made it that time. So he did it kind of backwards, you know. It's normally... Normally, it's nice to... Uh, there you go. It roars off the runway. I hope he's happy with that. Well, it's normal in... Uh, normal for us... There we go. So 101 meters. I wow. Think that's that's Take off, good. 42 meters. Landing, 59. Right. So I think he's... 101 meters, I think, is the winning today. Yeah. Well so, done. <laughs> I, th I think that that may be our best for the day, even with the scratching, the first one. Yeah. So normally, in my mind, I would prefer to win. I would prefer to fly conservatively the first landing have one in the bank have one in the bank yeah and then you know you got a good one in the bank yeah. now go ahead and maybe see if you can just tighten that up just a little yeah. bit and, and hope, it, hope it doesn't scratch but you know you take it as it comes if you if you get a scratch you just you keep fly and you just keep living and go yeah. oh oh i gotta wake up i gotta yeah. wake up <laughs> yeah. okay i'm not quite as sharp i'm yeah. ready i gotta gotta do something different what's it going to be and then maybe that little more adrenaline a little more pressure yeah. will bring it into something tight like it happened for kike with now just at 101 meters so let's, let's see how he is when he comes back over <laughs> yeah I guess he'd be pretty happy with that. How much I keep noticing that the dust you know, when the wind picks up and they're, they're flying into the dusty the dusty air. How much does that have much of an effect? Mm, uh, so what's that word I we were talking about that word yesterday? Poop um Puleva? Pulvo. 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 Pulvo is dust in yeah. Argentina. Well, I think it's a factor of life in Argentina, is yeah. the pulvo. Yeah. And, uh, there's a dust on the... I got a beautiful little VW Amarok pickup. Yeah. It's a, that and the Toyota Hilux, I guess, are the choice vehicles around here. But that little bit of dust on the windshield of the Volkswagen Amarok you know, it's like, oh, I'd like to get rid of that, but i got to get no. off. I don't want to scratch the windshield. Gotta... Oh, here we go. The Skywagon. Marcelo Benitez. There he goes. Nice and clean. You hear that prop wrap off the hanger and off the trees. So these are the heavy touring. So these will heavy be the, the heaviest group. 
of right. planes. And they are, the, in terms of carrying weight, they're the most, the most they're very capable aircraft. Yeah. And they handle great, and they can be flown like a cub, but they're a bigger airplane, so they're going to take up more runway. Yeah. So then we and have the, the leaderboard. I've, I've talked to each of the guys with the Skywagons here yesterday, and they have all fascinating stories about how they acquired their airplanes. Some One fellow flew his, bought his in Texas, yeah. flew it to Alaska, and then turned around and flew it to here. Wow. In about two months, yeah. two months time, yeah. <coughs> we got the leader board up there, so it's confirmed. Kiki yep. is, is number one dog by over forty meters shorter than this number two pilot, which was Tinte yeah. and his BA eighteen. That's in the bush category. Yeah, and I think that's going to be your your tightest group. Yeah. It's not often you get a group of guys bragging about who has the shortest. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the goal here is to get into get into all the tight places. So you want to get into all the beautiful places. So you so there's a parallel, I guess. But the <laughs> but the, but the you know all the pretty spots in the mountains are. Uh, Take all these disciplines and take an airplane that can work in a small area to go, so you can go in and enjoy all that. One of, one of the big uh, tourist uh, industries, I guess, here is the fly fishing. Mm. So we've got people like the river guides, and a lot of independent uh, guides around the, around the village. Everybody fly fishes, you know. Kiki's got a video where he just drops on the side of this, <laughs> this river or lake on his plane. Takes his rod out and just starts fishing. You know? Yeah. It's just stunning to watch it. Really. That's kind of a normal event. I mean, that sounds like a normal use of the airplane. Yeah. 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 You like to fish. Well, sure. I, I see him working here all the time. You know, in the corner of his of his office, he's got his backpack with his fishing rod ready to rock. <laughs> so I guess when he's fed up, he can just jump in. And yeah. Sure. Yeah. For me, it's just to take a walk. For me, it's to take a walk and to have a nice time. Uh, getting out into the countryside. Yeah. Uh, that's the that's the real beauty of these airplanes is that you can go out and land up in these hills, which you've seen these hills in the cameras, and uh, find yourself a pretty spot where there's no road to or anything like that, and just it could be to fly fish, it could be to take a hike along the a river, it could be to take a hike up into the high country. Uh, absolutely there's a there's a there's a serenity to that there's a joy to that yeah. and uh, it's, it's very uh, uh it's a very special very special thing i can remember that you again from wales i can remember that with my little backpack when i was 15 years old hiking up into the walking down some twisting curving little lane and then yeah. up into a public way you have in public ways in england you have public ways in yeah. Wales as well, yeah, right? Yeah, we have, we have, uh, green lanes. Green lane in is uh, green roads, so they're not. Uh, uh, you know, you can drive along them in, in four by fours, but they're not, they're not a road. Essentially, they're just a public highway. They have horse lanes as well, you know, where because it was a horse country a long time ago. Right. So they're still on the maps. So uh, my friend does a lot of <coughs> touring on bicycles, and he follows these lanes. You know, can go, but. But you can't really get a car down them. No. So yeah, so there's this this serenity out there. And to the, I remember walking around England at the, I mean walking around Wales, England really, but with that backpack and just thoroughly enjoying the, just the quiet and the solitude. And these airplanes, especially the Super Cubs, they'll get you there. They'll get you out to there and land you safely there. In the minimal amount of space, you know, very quickly, gets you to that country. I so, don't know if there's any pilots actually come over from here. It's interesting. I'm in contact with some of the clubs over in Wales to see if they'd want to come across. 
So we're looking for uh, looking for that sky wagon to come back. Looking for that sky wagon to come back for his uh, landing. I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, we've got a V-tail bonanza. About to go. Was he, he was actually competing, this guy? Well... Maybe he just went to the shop. No. <laughs> I think it does start with a charm. So we're gonna have a V-tail bonanza in the stole competition. So that's a broad-minded, that's a broad-minded approach to things. Well, everybody can come and and play. I don't think I'd land a V-tail up in the summertime on wheels on a glacier, but. Uh, <laughs> It got him here, and it got him here quickly, and we're in a beautiful spot. So we'll call it we'll, we'll call it bush we'll call it a bush plane today. Detail bonanza. This guy singing in the background is the martial art. So the rating going on through the day. Yeah. Hola. Hola. Here's some more uh, facturas for you guys. <laughs> You want some more coffees or waters? No, I'm good. We're good. Here comes KK back. Now he's driving a three-wheeler. <laughs> I think it's uh, not young. 101 meters. 101 meters, man. 101. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Thank you. I, I, yeah. Well, I look. Uh, yeah. You're a good treat here. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. Saw you scratch. Saw you scratch the first one there. Yes, I scratched the first one. Uh -huh. And in the second try, the throttle ball get off the oh, okay. his place. So I took it. Charlie Keaton, Mike. Yep, he's competing. Yeah. No, he's leaving. He's leaving. Yeah. Oh. We're gonna have a new competitor that is Leandro Busaca. Okay. I need to give me one second. I have to tell the guys they don't have no I thought that the sky wagon was, mm. but the sky wagon came to the line, came to the line, but Anza didn't. But Anza took the whole thing. These croissants are pretty. So we've got Daniel, Daniel, how do you pronounce that? Wegerson, Wegerson, Daniel Wegerson in Foxtrot Zulu Golf, 
Oops, that's the 180. He's warming up with the competition. The first Skywagon, the first 180. He's on the list, but he decided he's he just took off. <coughs> Daniel's um, Daniel's written quite a few uh, written a book. Uh, it's here in the hangar. Oh, I've got his book. That's his book. They the, gave me that book about all the... The different stories of the pilots from around the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. This is his son just here in front of us here. Oh, yeah. So we got the son now here who's filming the father and there's another. He's got a brother here too, I think. Brother or cousin. How do you pronounce Daniel's surname? Worsley. 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 This is his son here filming him. Yes. And there's another brother or another cousin here. Uh, there's a bunch of Worsley here. What a bunch. Relax. Relax. Coffee. Whiskey. Right now it's gonna do. Okay. You got water? No water? Yes. Please. Yeah, here's a bottle. Yeah, man. Not only we were we were talking the commentary. I hope it was live because we were saying not only did this guy get. 30 or 50 people engaged each have their role you know from the video to Zeke with the drones you know to to the people with the asado the people to manage the traffic it just you had 30 or 50 people you had to get to do their part yes that you created and then all these other pilots now show up from five countries I think yes. there's five Airplanes here from five countries in South America, all watching Thanks you, again. and you're done all this, and you had the night last night with you know the, <laughs> with the restaurant, kind and you had to organize there. it all, and now you got to go win the thing, and you <laughs> did. You came up, jumped in your Super Cub, and you flew it, and you won. It's not so the, the, the idea to win. The idea is to push forward the thing. Uh, yeah, well, you're a gentleman to say that, and that's true, but we're all, we all have an ego we want to do as well as we can, and right? For sure, always. Yeah, so you did, you and you and, it, and that happened too, so I know, like, when you said you're ready to sit down and relax, you don't need a Red Bull. I understand. You read, <laughs> you've, you've got a lot you've put into this, KK, for like sure. I like competition. I compete all my life and been part of build this and to compete too. Is one of the most cool. greatest things in my life. Cool. Yeah. We are sharing here one of the moments of my life. So yeah. thank you guys for being here. Well, you created a lot. You should be proud of that. Thank you. Feel well. good about it. Thank you. Know, you. You're a natural leader. I imagine mean, you do a lot, a lot of things. Okay, so Danny, we got who do we have here now? Daniel Wersin, one of the Daniel first Bush pilots in Patagonia. Tell, tell us, he's lined up. He's He's on the line, he's, he's getting the line, focused, yeah. ready for his takeoff. He's had this plane a long time. Yes, Daniel has his plane at least for 30 years, I believe. Daniel is Pablo's father. Pablo is one of the closest guys here in the team, Patagonia with pilots. And how far is he from home now? How far has he traveled well, to this he, airport? he used to own the Lake Cholila airstrip and he had a disease, so it is. He he need to move into one side. He's the one that sold that, and yeah. then the, the guy that owned the land. Exactly. Yeah. Now he's living in Lobos, Buenos Aires province. I believe it's a thousand and seven hundred kilometers from here. South of here. Yes, it's a, a thousand miles, perhaps. And oh. he was so confused with his disease, with his thing, and this kept him. Some a focus, of focus and energy. come back to yes. the pilot community here. It's one of the best things of the traveling flying to have Danny here enjoying aviation with us. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was told about that airstrip. It's up at a lake in the mountains in a very beautiful spot. Is that is that yes. correct? Where you, you, yeah. you had that land for yeah, much of his did, life? In the next day, we're going to fly together. Oh, okay. uh, there are two great airstrips that Daniel... Well, Daniel used to own the Lake Cholila and work into Lake Esperanza. And now I'm doing that job. I'm taking things there with... The XP, we took gas, propane, food for the people, we took the people oh. there. He's revving up. I believe he's ready. No, he's he's not at the line oh, yet. He's got a pull yeah. Today. He's warming up, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So so is the uh Yeah, interesting. Uh, uh, some noise, a horn or something on your... Yeah, he does. I do. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw him was on Mervyn Evans's plane. I said, well, what's that for? A big klaxon. He said, well, that's to move the cows out of it. <laughs> no, you know why I put that on the plane? Because there is some fires here in the National Park and the people ask us to help find who did those fire intentional. And people at the ground don't have aviation radios. So when I found people in the middle of the wood, I cannot communicate with them. So it was cheaper to buy that device than an aeronautical radio. So I reduce power and I can speak from okay. that, that thing that I have. So you can uh, speak correctly. So the exactly, and the people can hear me. They hear in a red jacket. On the exactly. Okay. That's it. Terrorists. Yeah. Not just because they're damaged to natives, they're at risk of life. Very lucky we got the volunteer uh, barbados here. We have there's three or four groups of fire and firefighters in it. And every year they, they, they put it on the line. Well, we are having right now a big fire. Yeah. Daniel's taxi into the line. Everything is in everybody's individual time here. I like it. It's peaceful. It's a calm place. It's a gentle, gentle society. But here's Daniel about to roll. The wind is now only 1.8 and it's a little off of the runway. I think it's a time delay on that. Yes, I believe yeah, it's a time delay. It's a little bit. Yeah, it's actually fairly down the runway and at least as strong as the 3.8 that we've seen most of the morning. I like to, to see the flag. The flag is like more precise than the wind, so mm. to feel the, that soft Oh, how much soft the, air. the soft one, Exactly. Right. I like that sound. And they're between uh, somewhere around mid 80s, the mid 80s, it looks like. Oh, 86. Here we go. 86 nice number. Yeah. I believe it's his best number here. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's, uh, it is quite a quiet town, but there are some wild places to hang out as well. <laughs> <laughs> Andy know a lot about those things. <laughs> oh, somebody's going to find it. Andy will find it. <laughs> Andy, you know. Andy's going to lead you there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. It just seems to... Uh, <laughs> My first time here, my brother in laws took me out. You know, one of the Ford F100. So that's the other weapon of choice in there, you know. We all get in this Ford and we sit back drinking wine. I don't know where the hell I went. I went to a, a Greek style bar where they were like, I don't know, <laughs> four or five in the morning. You guys are still drinking. And you don't remember where they were? 
place where I've never seen it since. Are you sure we're here? It's really? Sure, it's really. <laughs> you know, but I've never seen the place since. I have no idea where it was. <laughs> Things look different at four in the morning when you're like that. <laughs> Twenty meter at least. Well, another good thing are those clouds. Those clouds are. They keep the turbulence down. Yes, and the warm and the density, the altitude, everything is very stable. Yeah, very stable. Yeah. Very stable. Without yeah, these clouds, it's been very stable all through all through the morning. Really, it's yeah. a, I've been a perfect. Two hundred six meters total, one hundred twenty on the landing. So for a plane of that that weight, that's a that's a good number. Yes, yeah, good number. Yeah. You feel the urge to, to jump in a plane, compete a little? Uh, no. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here and get to know everybody. I'm, I'm learning so much just being here, you know, from, and attempt number two. He is number Okay, so yep, that was a lot seventy one meters compared to his eighty six for his first his first round. So he's seventy one meters. It's a big improvement. Mm -hmm. He's out there playing for 30 years. He must really know every look at Granny, every. Uh, I met each of those pilots there. yesterday. Yeah. And uh, look forward to seeing them after the after this competition also. <coughs> Just turn in final. Then Daniel was Daniel Beggars in. Okay. Oh yeah. 
at him. Good breaks. Yeah, real consistent. Six departing. One hundred twenty-four meters, so slightly longer. One hundred ninety-five overall. overall yeah, overall shorter. Negri is up next, taxiing to the line in the pretty purple, <coughs> the light purple and white 180. Time in him. Keeps him in shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What'd you say about these going around your belly? That was a no flap takeoff, so that's his own way of doing it, but <clears throat> no flap. He didn't use any flaps on that takeoff. And uh almost invariably with a Cessna wing, that big fowler fowler flap makes a huge difference to, to get out. But it accelerated quickly. Everybody has their technique. 113 meters. 
What was the takeoff? We haven't written it in here, but what was the take? The last takeoff was what seventy four meters. Seventy one was the short. Seventy one. Right. These really good pastries here, and I inhaled a little piece of one. You know, I got news from my daughter last night. I got news from my daughter last night. Landing. Wow. Congratulations, man. Yeah, last night. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. First, wow. first time for her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is my daughter. Yeah. She's uh, she's just. Oh, let me find the other. She's just, how do you say 20? She's a 20? 20. She's 20 anos more than you. <laughs> but in, in my mind, in my mind, my daughter is the same age as you. To, to me, Emma, to me, this is my daughter. The same for you and your dad. Yeah. She's super sensitive. She understands those things. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like to go flying with your dad? Yeah. Where's your favorite place he takes you to go? Oh, to get on the water and make the spray? Yes. Yeah. There is a, a video when she was about uh, five years old. She asked me to feel G. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to feel the G's. In that video, her eyes came out of his face. And <laughs> she took a, at least one year to, came to fly again. To and come now back. she's enjoying it. <laughs> Oh, you like aerobatics? Do you do you, do you, do you take the stick and make it do aerobatics? Not yet. No. She likes to feel the thing on his the, body, but not to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to control it. Hey. Yep, yep. Let's see what <clears> happened <throat> with Alfredo. Oh, Alfredo's on I think he's gonna have final land for his first landing. Yeah, he's too fast. His first landing is yeah. right now. 
Yeah, no, he scratched the first landing because uh, okay. he bounced a lot, so he'll probably come back round and uh, take his second. second. He's with. <laughs> yep, still carrying power. Yeah. Well, he flew it on. He flew it on. He's, he's more comfortable. He's more yeah. comfortable with that one in the yeah, first one. Sure. Yeah. Security first. We're here to have fun, not to win anything. No. Yeah. You know, no airplane, no no metal has been bent here. You have a hundred percent safe event exactly. here. Exactly. Very, Very safe. Very safe. You can say it. The leader of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys, anything? Water? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Relax. <clears throat> you need anything? Okay. <laughs> I know why he's so thin. He's running in all and out time. all the time. Yeah. For the last week, I believe he slept at least five hours. That's five much. hours. The other hours of the day, he was working with this. The entire yeah. day he was working with the cables, Focused on with everything. the cameras, with the streaming, with the internet. He's a machine. Mm -hmm. He's, a, He's a machine. machine. Yeah. Yeah. Estranía yeah. la escuela. You miss school? Yeah. I'm going to go to school with my son. Oh, really? The same yeah. class? Same age? Yeah. Oh, okay. Twelve years old. They are at school. Oh, yeah. okay. I worry because he's his son, so perhaps he's going to be as dangerous as, as him. <laughs> no, uh, Lennox, uh, Lennox is, is quiet. He's, um, he's more like the mother. Yeah. But he is a very reserved, thoughtful person. The other one. <laughs> <laughs> the devil. The one, you have an older one too? I got, I got a younger one. Oh, a younger one. Oh. Eight years old. He's a Tasmanian dog. Oh. So here's the, the second, second a try. Oh. Alfredo Negri. Looks yeah. When it's high. When it's yeah. high, yeah. And he asked it to fly at almost exactly the right yeah. time for that flap. That's when it flew. Use it yet to take it, make the roll with the flap. Make shorter the, the takeoff. The first takeoff was no flap. Did the you? What? No, I didn't the saw it. Oh, yeah. He was. Very fast. This is completely new for us. No, this no, is his first time. no flap takeoff first time. And it was ready to fly here with flap, but he flew there without, without it. it. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Learn how to use flaps is super important in this kind of flying. So it's obvious who has practiced through this line, yeah. actually on a line before, and who is not. not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This yep. is gonna be the first time for Alfredo, and it's the first time for Leandro. He's gonna be the next competitor. Leandro, this yeah. is the last guy you just put yes. in this year? Leandro is gonna be the last guy to compete, and just Alfredo and Leandro, they are their first time competing in stall. So, not the last. In the security brief we made two days ago, we say that. We are not here to try new things. We are here right, to right, do right. what we were training. So we can see easy which one trained yeah. <laughs> before. <coughs> so Alfredo best takeoff was 109 meters. Hmm? This landing was this way. You can see the smoke on the back of the screen. That's a big fire in the National Park Los Alerces. 20 miles from here. The 
mean his healthiness to keep the smoke out of this area. Emma, yeah. it's my daughter and me back in. Skiing, we were skiing. Here he comes. Yeah. And full left. <coughs> Still flying. A lot of energy. Absolutely. How long does he have this airplane? How long oh, he yeah. has this airplane, I believe. <coughs> Five years. Five years or so. It's the first time installed. Yes. So I will say this. It, it's more important with this airplane yeah. to fly it gracefully than to fly it super short. And he's doing... That was graceful, actually. Yeah. So it's more important to be smooth with this than it is to be abrupt. You know, be, to be... The finesse... That, that's finesse to yeah. be graceful. The real finesse is to ha do that with less energy. To be that smooth with less energy. And that's his burning a lot of fuel. Then that's burning <laughs> a lot of fuel. <laughs> right. <coughs> I like to see the wheels with the white lines. Yeah, right. The white from the dust. Yeah. And chalk. <laughs> so we've got our last competitor our is last, Leandro uh, first timer Basico. Leandro Busaca, Busaca. a friend from Busaca. Pedro Luro, Buenos Aires province. He used to be the owner of the Coyote that Bernardo oh, okay. owns today. He changed from the Coyote to the 180. Oh, he told me about change. selling it. Came from the light sport category to the heavy, heavy touring category. With no stop in the middle. No the stop, stop in the middle. <laughs> directly. The wind is actually here. lighter now. The wind is actually light. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry, continue. The wind is actually a little lighter here, according to this, like one to two miles an hour. Air <coughs> prop. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting and, thing uh, here is that Leandro wasn't supposed to be competed. He had at the last moment because two of the competitors we have to the heavy touring didn't present into the briefing, obligatory briefing we had when, uh, the Friday. So there were only Daniel and Alfredo on the heavy touring category. And we said to Leandro, do you want to compete? You don't have to do anything else as when you land for the first time in traveling and you will have the th at least the third place. Right. <laughs> and now that because he was there, he attended the briefing. Exactly, yeah. he was at the briefing. So uh, the interesting thing is, he's new. His his first competition. He's uh, he has this plane at least for just two or three months, mm. and he's now competing to Daniel and Alfredo. And let's see what happened. Perhaps it's second, second place. place, third right. place. We'll see. We'll see. There's a, there's a always, there's, there's always the chance, you know, the, the, the beginner's luck, you know. It's the beginner's, beginner's luck, luck yeah. for sure. <coughs> slowly, slowly, the smoke is approaching, and it's, it's gonna 
help us finish the competition and then perhaps we can feel something. Yeah, the, the high overcast has kept it um, not turbulent. You know, nobody's wings are shaking today. No, very it's stable. very stable air from the high overcast taking all the solar heat over in the mountains. And the mountains now are very gorgeous. The smoke is lifted. This morning, the mountains were obscured. I wait. And, uh, and uh, so now he's on final. Coming in on final. Judges, well, they've had to move a lot further up there. <laughs> the wrong way now. Yeah. <laughs> yep, so there he goes. He's got a. There he goes. He's got himself a. You can say he flew at the competition. Yeah. So he's 285 meters. Okay. That's his first run, so maybe next one he can improve on that. It's nice when the, the competition sort of bites, it's sort of like, well, now you're really on to start thinking, you know, you can improve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Having, being here and flying it for everybody is, it gives them a real perspective now on, on how they do as a person in the pressure of the competition, how their airplane is prepared, how much fuel they're carrying, how, how they're, knowing how they're, their mind is prepared, how well slept they are. Yeah. It's all, they're aware now, like how the result becomes from all the efforts up to that. And also how the other air, other pilots of the other planes are doing rel, do relative to their, them in yeah. each of those, with each of those categories. Weight is a big thing. Did I see you take the spare seat out of the, yeah, I thought I saw, because I went by the first time, I said, oh, I can see, oh, here we go, take off number two for Leandro, who's the guy? Yeah, that was good. Uh, I think it was, well, he's, I think it was, well, out of four notches, I think he had two. I was talking, but I think he had two. Yeah. But I mean, it's all there. Yeah. Everything is there. Yeah, it's all. And feel yeah. slow or fast you can. Right. right. Two, two ways of flying, I would yeah. say. One is by numbers and the other one is by feelings. Feelings always wins. Yes. This kind of flying is just by feelings. Yeah. You need to know the numbers, but when you feel the plane, the plane became part of your body. And that's right. a completely different. Yeah, and as the plane builds lift, it's and you're holding that pressure with the flap, it's telling you, okay, let me go now. Second. And you just and you can ease it off. And, uh, yeah, so Leander, and you pronounce that Busaka? Exactly, perfect. Busaka, okay. Yep. It's <clears throat> been really a pleasure. I met, I was saying I met, well, I met many, many pilots here. And I met all of the pilots, so all the sky wagons when I was here yesterday, or in the three days, I've met them all. Very interesting. 
It's an honor to have you here. You know that. Oh. I uh, appreciate too much uh, having you present here <laughs> and your collaboration with this is. I want to. Oh, thank you yeah. very much. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you, Bob. No. Who's this one? Okay. It's mine. Oh, no, yes, yours. One this one's yours. mine. CK, I appreciate it. It's very, it's, CK, to be here is uh, a pleasure and an honor for me, too, you know. It's nice to be a part of the soul of the stole, and, you know, it's a, it's a community. It's a friendships. It it's friendships across the planet that are interested in similar stuff. And you've got so much, there's so much room, right? There's so much room to expand here in the end. In, yeah. In, in, in Everything Argentina. is new. This kind of thing is new here. Yeah, there's so, so much to explore and learn and people to meet by being out and traveling. I talked to uh, one fellow yesterday whose brother-in-law lives in a cabin down at the foot of some famous mountain. I'll think of which mountain it is in a minute and and he showed me in google maps where it is it's like i made a mark because i know i can you can't land there. Land, land <laughs> yeah, there. Sure. oh yeah i'll tell my brother-in-law <laughs> you know it's like and everyone is gonna be happy if you land there that's yeah. the best thing yeah, it's Trevelin. exciting Trevelin is has a great community traveling people yeah. are good in traveling is there are some good, people here good people yeah and here's uh, Leandro on uh, short final. Left in the wind, he cleaned the wind, very good. Well, he threw him down. He <laughs> threw him down, but it didn't. It, 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 it didn't. It didn't. It didn't click in. Click and when grab when it slowed down, it just fell to one. There, he got it now. Yeah. Well, let's so, see the uh, results. I'm interested <coughs> in, in, in the results. In the result between Alfredo and Leandro is the most interesting thing for me right now. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so these, these guys are new in this kind of competition. Leandro is also new in this plane and his best number is 285.5 meters the total i think that was the number i remember from uh from, from, some, from alfredo previous yeah. so you think this is uh you may have to tie? fly them again oh, yeah. yeah yeah i think let us check yeah Was his because, best one? Yeah. Mm. <coughs> there he goes. Beginner's luck. He got it. Beginner's so. lucky. Congratulations to Leandro. We did yeah, second place. Yeah. So are, so are we. Uh, so we. We finished everyone with the flown, competition. Yes. Everyone has flown at this point. Wow. Okay. So I believe now the party start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll go get mm. my special trousers. <laughs> <laughs> His special trousers. It was fun doing the. Yeah, thank thing you very much, you, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, you sorry. I, like I say, I'm very green to this at the moment. So thank you. A Andy, lot of questions. Part of this. So, uh, and you learn a lot as well, even though you didn't compete. You learn a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. Know? I learned I want to get an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be easier for you to learn now. Yeah. <laughs> You've been learning a, a more, very important part of this. Just being part of 
you just got to be around the what I like and it's what I miss about uh, being in the UK uh, I was always around enthusiasts mm-hmm. and uh, you with know, can see now the results with, with the cars and um, you know in the hangar oh it was 195 okay that's what we saw so so yeah so there's experience right there right? yeah, yeah you experience. can see the numbers yeah yep, that's experience that's it that's what makes him number two and number three (laughs) yeah yeah so yeah like you said beginner's luck he got second place in the competition yeah Yeah, so uh yeah there we go so are we still live do you think or maybe still live but i i would like to finish here and let's join yeah let's do that something to drink or eat yeah okay thank you very much and uh Thank you guys. Yep. All right, take Stay care. Up. That's all. Nice to meet you. What do Yeah, yeah, she's very skillful. And uh, in the school playground, you know, the boys are rough. The boys are so, uh, she's quite uh, a skillful girl. Oh, okay. If it ain't so, we might as well rock in. You know, Kiki has a small hole. Oh. 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 If you look on the other side, you see. Oh. Yeah, yeah. This is his home. You know, I think he spends more time here than in his house. That's him, but I can, no? Has your mom been the one? Oh, she was here? She's here. She's here. She's just having the little... They, they... The brand, the curtain, the door. She's selling some stuff. Selling the cloth. Mi mamá no le gusta. I think she likes she doesn't like fine as much. She wants to. Oh, did you say you had, you know, Welsh family? So, so my wife, my wife's oh, family. Wife. When, when we came here, Ben just see Ben followed their family. Ben followed their wife. She didn't want to come. <laughs> Her mud over there. Yeah. She <coughs> the mud and the rain and the cold. But now she's here. She, she likes. She likes. It. Oh, it's more free. Oh, yeah, in the year. Yeah. 